Welcome back to What The Tech, where we answer your tech questions. And today we are talking about the best VPN service for 2022. We're gonna be looking at WeVPN, NordVPN, ExpressVPN, and Surfshark, and a few other services have been dropped since my previous review, as this VPN space is really tricky to navigate. And there's also a lot of talks about some VPN providers buying up even the review websites, so they can seemingly list themselves as the best VPN provider, tested by an independent party. One password kindly offered to sponsor this video since they won my best password manager comparison that I did a few weeks back. So thank you to one password for that. And there'll be a link down below to get 50% off from them if you want that. But otherwise, this comparison is 100% based on my own experience of being a paying customer of these VPN services. Then after making this video, I will go online to find any discounts I can and link those down below too. And for each one, we're going to be covering features, speed, security, and pricing. And then at the end, we're going to wrap up with which one I am going to stick with for this year. So with that said, let's take a look at the very first one, which is a new one for this year's video, WeVPN. WeVPN is a new kid on the block, technically. It was only launched in 2020, but being a relatively newbie to this space gives it a ton of advantages. They've got apps for pretty much every device you could ever think of, and some extra tools like WeAlert that integrates with haveibeenowned.com or haveibeenpwned.com, which lets you know if your personal information has been breached and leaked online. They have a DNS feature that's currently in beta and lets you lock down and secure your browsing, protect yourself online, browse websites faster, and access blocked content, all without needing to actually dial up to a VPN service in the first place. It's always on and can cover unlimited devices. And of course, as of filming this video, there is a lot of horrible things going on in this world right now. So being able to access content free of borders and boundaries is a huge thing. Now back to the actual VPN service itself. As of December 2021, you can have up to 10 devices secured by the service. And they also have a feature called WePlay, which gives you full access to over 350 different streaming services and websites across the world. So as far as VPN services go, WeVPN does seem to just go above and beyond just that little bit further to actually protect your privacy. In terms of the actual transfer speeds, we're gonna test by downloading some large files from servers that I know can handle those speeds and across multiple countries as we go further and further away from my location here, which is in the UK. Now I'm using a hardwired machine, it's isolated from anything else, and the only thing connected to my broadband was that machine, so nothing else in my house could affect these results. UK to UK, 790 meg per second. UK to France, 820 meg per second, UK to US, 630, UK to Australia, 280, and UK to New Zealand, 180. Now, those speeds are incredibly fast. And for most people, unless you have a fast connection like me, you will hit your own speed limits before you hit their limits. Though just one thing to note here is that at time of making this review, there is an issue with the Mac client of WeVPN. And whilst it does work, I was seeing speeds about half of what I was seeing on Windows. So just be aware of that. If you use Windows, there's no issues. If you are a Mac user, then it's just worth checking that out before you do anything. But with that said, let's see how that compares to other providers that we're testing today, of course, after we've looked at security and privacy, because one of the biggest issues surrounding VPN providers today is that many of them are not actually secure. They're not actually keeping your data private, and many of them are doing very unethical things online to try and win your business. So I'm not sure if I find it amusing, or perhaps with WeVPN being the new kid on the block trying to break waves and everything, when I came across this, this Twitter thread from WeVPN calling out another VPN provider for both using a free online service, howibeenpwned.com, and licensing it as their own with no reference at all to the original creator and charging for it. Now, of course, once they were called out on it, they, of course, apologized and fixed it. And, you know, that whole kind of thing was uh, kind of sorted out. But then WeVPN went after them again to ask if they were simply white labeling another VPN service, which seems a bit strange to me, which, of course, they say they weren't. But all in all, it just seems like WeVPN really are interested in protecting their customers' data. Now, they also list all of their staff on the website. You can also get in touch via encrypted PGP keys, which is something I've not seen before from any VPN provider, which allows for a truly encrypted way to get in touch with them instead of generic like contact us forms that most people will be using on the website. They also show their existing roadmap, though it's not been updated to show what's coming in 2022 yet. They display their standards and ethics along with groups they're members of and specifically the VPN Trust Initiative, which 
includes ExpressVPN, NordVPN, and Surfshark, who we're also covering today. WeVPN's HQ is in the British Virgin Islands, which has some of the best privacy laws in the world. And it isn't part of this thing called the 14 Eyes Intelligence Group, which basically are uh, countries are known to collect and share user data amongst themselves. There's also been no reported breaches, but it is worth noting that there doesn't seem to be any independent audits that have been carried out. Now, in terms of pricing, you sign up for two years and get three months free, and that will cost $2.59 per month, billed every two Two years so that works out to be 69.96 for two years oh and also journalists can get a free copy just by getting in touch so pricing seems pretty good actually and includes everything that you need including the new security and privacy features that i mentioned privacy am i american now privacy so that's a good start next up let's talk about last year's winner of the best vpn provider surfshark <laughs> As well as the standard VPN features that we'd expect now, Surfshark also lets you block ads and malware, has a private online search feature, has personal data breach notifications if you sign up for their alert service, and they also specifically call out secure IPTV access, as well as buffer-free online sports. Now you can also use Surfshark on unlimited devices. And if we run those same speed tests, we've got this time UK to UK at 600 megaseconds, UK to France, 410, UK to US 400, UK to Australia 350, and UK to New Zealand 280. Pretty good speeds. Again, not as fast as WeVPN, but pretty good. And I have to say, the speeds during my tests did fluctuate a lot this time around. I think because of all the activity going on with obviously Russia and Ukraine, with so many people now signing up for these VPN services to avoid content restrictions which are being enforced upon them. So whilst I will say these speeds are impressive, I also struggled with a few locations and I had to try multiple times to find one variation of that location that did give me a good speed which is kind of fine because it doesn't actually take long to actually swap over the servers now when it comes to security surfshark is one that has been independently audited for any issues which came back essentially with flying colors and it is an improvement on the last audit they had which only covered the the chrome and the firefox extensions rather than the actual like internal systems so it is great to see they've taken extra steps to show that they have nothing to hide however in 2021 surfshark announced they were moving from the virgin islands to to the Netherlands, which is part of this Nine Eyes alliance that shares information between countries. And they stated that this is due to, generally, it's more favorable tax conditions, which kind of makes sense if you're a growing business. They have been transparent in their announcements and say that they can still retain their no logs guarantee, even from within the EU. But there is still concern, of course, around what their intentions might really be and if any legislation changes could affect their ability to keep their data anonymous. But there have been no reports of breaches over the years. And so as it currently stands, I don't think you have any Anything to worry about with Surfshark. Pricing wise, it's $2.49 per month for two years, which comes to a total of $59.76. It works out to be about 10 bucks cheaper than WeVPN, but they have an add on for an extra $1.49 per month, which gives you extra protection like antivirus protection, breach alerts if your data gets leaked, and additional privacy features which are included as standard WeVPN. Which then brings the total to $95.52 for two years, which is a lot more expensive than WeVPN providing of course you take up those additional features or if you don't use them it's the cheapest now next up it's nordvpn <laughs> NordVPN is pretty much the go-to when it comes to VPN services. They're pretty much everywhere when it comes to marketing with notable online celebrities like sponsoring Casey Neistat and are one of the highest ranking apps on the App Store. For features, you can connect up to six devices across pretty much any device type. There's also privacy features to hide your browsing traffic. It can block malware and viruses, has 2FA and a kill switch to cut off everything if you notice something's not quite right. There's a cool split tunneling feature that lets you stream content via the VPN but still browse locally without those websites thinking you're in like whichever location you're streaming from. You can also get a dedicated IP address. There's double hop protection. There's just a ton of features. But notable omissions is the lack of breach notifications if your data gets leaked. Now, normally that's not something I would personally expect from a VPN service, but it is worth mentioning given that both WeVPN and Surfshark offer this. When it comes to speeds, it's Fairly similar to Surfshark. UK to UK, 600. UK to France, 450. US, 420. Australia, 330. And New Zealand, 320. Now, overall, these speeds are pretty solid. And actually, for Australia and New Zealand, which are the furthest distance from me, it's been 
by far the best. But again, for most people, unless you have an ultra fast connection, you'll end up maxing out your connection before you actually hit the limitations of the VPN service itself. Overall though, I would say WeVPN does seem to be taking the lead on speeds, providing you don't want to connect to the other side of the world. But in terms of privacy, NordVPN was audited back in 2020. There's been no further update or audit since then. However, 2018 was their audit before that. So every two years, and I'd expect that next time I do this review, that should have another audit completed by then. They're also based in Panama and are outside of the 14 eyes, the nine eyes and five eyes, <laughs> which means that there's nothing to worry about here when it comes to your privacy. Pricing wise, we're at three dollars 49 per month for two years so that comes to 83.76 which is almost 20 percent more expensive than we vpn it's more expensive than surfshark if you don't take out that extra breach protection from them but does potentially give you better privacy than surfshark lastly let's take a look at express vpn and i'll be honest here express vpn were always one that i wasn't really that fond of. They seem to be like the biggest player out there with the biggest marketing budget. And when someone spends a ton on marketing, I just wonder if their product's actually any good. Now features we've seen here before, split tunneling, which lets you stream online whilst browsing locally. They also offer a privacy DNS service, which your whole house can use to protect your browsing even when you're not connected to the VPN service. There's a kill switch, blocking of malicious content, and you can use it on up to just five devices. So that's Surfshark with unlimited, WeVPN with 10, NordVPN with six, and ExpressVPN with five. Speed is up next and boy, is this thing speedy. UK to UK, it's 600. France, 520. US, 770. UK to Australia, 370 and UK to New Zealand, 420. Ridiculously fast speeds. Now these are some of the best speeds in comparison to the others I've tested, particularly when you look at the locations further away from me, like Australia and New Zealand, though it does lose in comparison to WeVPN for the nearby locations. Now for security and privacy, there's good news again, no breaches. They're also in the British Virgin Islands, so outside of the whole like 14 eyes thing, and has proof that it doesn't retain data logs, so all good stuff there. Pricing, however, is $8.32 per month on a one-year deal. And it's kind of awkward, but they don't offer a two-year price. So for two years, it's a total of $199.90, 185% more expensive than the cheapest provider in our tests. 185%. But let's be fair, let's, let me just look at the one-year pricing. WeVPN, $4.16 per month. Surfshark, $3.06 per month. And NordVPN, $4.99 per month. All of those are on a like a one year plan, which still makes ExpressVPN over 170% more expensive than the cheapest one year pricing from Surfshark. Nuts, absolutely nuts. So if you want the best VPN service, my recommendation this year would be to go with WeVPN. It is fast, it's affordable, it's secure, has a ton of features included as standard and has a reasonable device limit too. Just be aware of their current issues with their Mac client if you're watching this like near the time that I post the video. In second place, I put NordVPN. Third would be ExpressVPN. Even though it's a high price, it's still a good service and gets good speeds. And then fourth would unfortunately be Surfshark, just because of their uncertainty around their decision to move to the Netherlands, even though it has good speeds and looks like a great service. Now, once you've got yourself set up with a VPN service, you'll also want to get yourself a good password manager. And there's a link down below to get 50% off from 1Password, who won my best password manager comparison video. Huge thank you to 1Password for sponsoring this video. Next, go and watch my full comparison for password managers, cloud storage, or if you actually want to know a little bit more about the winner of today's comparison, WeVPN, then I'll be making a separate follow-up video soon. So subscribe for that. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.